Hi, welcome to Adventures in Glass with Doug. That's me. I've been working with glass, uh, glass sculptures, glass totems, glass fountains, glass bird baths for about seven years now. And I was introduced to it by a good friend and this hobby has just taken off among my other hobbies. <clears throat> and I thought after publishing a number of stories in, on my blog about it, there was quite a bit of interest in it. So I thought, well, maybe I need to explain to people just exactly how this all goes together. So that's the purpose of these videos is to give you an understanding of what it is that these glass sculptures, fountains, bird baths, totems are all about, and how you can make them, what supplies you need, and maybe some design inspiration along the way. Uh, I don't always know what I'm going to end up with because it really depends on what I manage to thrift and find in uh, my various shops. So what are we going to do today? Well, I, I really think you're going to like the um, red totem I make today. I, I kind of lead off with some of the thrifting I just did and some of the idea pieces that I have. So if you want to know how we put together a simple red totem and fairly quickly, watch today's video. Well, I'd like to take a minute to just show you what I gleaned today at uh, a couple of the thrift shops I go to. Um, some pieces here I think will make their way into some of my creations. Uh, so let me kind of run through those with you real quick. Some of these I uh, previously picked up. Uh, I have some mosaic glass. These two pieces I think will work well. Usually I run those upside down. Um, uh, they they should be they should be pretty good. They've got a a nice um, transition from a dark blue teal green up to something light. Another piece of mosaic glass. I don't usually get too much in the purple lavender range. Um, this one's this one's in good shape. Sometimes these will be missing some pieces. None of these seem to. I think that probably would be a somehow be used as a base. This piece is rather plain. Obviously, I'm going to take off the, the wrap that's on here. Um, but it's a heavy piece, and it'll have, it'll probably be the sort of thing either I run this way or flip over, but it could work well for a, a fountain base. This one, again, nothing unusual about it, but it's a nice bell shape, and it's very heavy. So it'll work well as some sort of a, a base. Um, this, well, I guess you call it an apothecary jar, um, that's got some nice volume to it and it's heavy. That could work well as a base. Um, I, this plate I think is really colorful. The only concern I have is that while it's clearly got green glass, the whole back of it is painted silver, which might take away from it if, if, if it was a, if it were to be put on something like um, this jar. So I don't know whether I'm going to use it as a flower um, that would be up or not, or whether I'm going to try and take off the silver paint on the back to see what happens. Funny, I found the mate, <laughs> totally different store, found the mate to a piece that I just recently used. Um, couldn't pass it up. Uh, a lead crystal flute. I don't know, when I get the label off, I'll have to take a look, see if there is any hint of it being Waterford. It sort of looks like it. Um, which brings me to a, a point that I, that I wanted to mention. Many times these pieces, folks will say, oh my gosh, you're taking really good crystal. Well, the reason it's in the thrift shops is, I don't know if you can see, you've got chips and cracks in a lot of this that you wouldn't use as a drinking glass. Even this large jar, has a ding and a chip out of it that takes away from it if you were using it for anything else other than what I'm doing. Um, I found a water glass that I love when you see these, but it has a pretty good ding out of it too. So you wouldn't use it anymore for drinking, but it can be a nice colorful piece in my sculptures. 
This, I couldn't pass this up. It, it is heavy, it is heavy. But this glass ball, probably gonna be a topper on something. Um, that's real heavy. Uh, just a simple red vase. Best I can see, this probably, even though you can see red in the bottom, I'm thinking it probably has been tinted uh, rather than strictly red. This, however, I know has has colors of uh, red and green bands that are truly glass on this. This is pretty heavy too. And it was over in, you have to, you really have to search. This was over in like the Christmas aisle of holiday stuff that I don't usually look at, but it was there. It could work well with this piece. I got a big red plate that can, that can work on, you know, as a topper on one of these, or if I wanted to use it as the background of a um, flower, although I'm not as big on the flowers these days. Here's a green piece that I thought was good, and likely I'll use this upside down, I guess, but it's hefty, and it's, as far as I could tell, it is true green all the way through. This is the really big punch bowl that I got. Spent a little more on that than normal. And then another punch bowl that looks like cabbage leaves. But that'll work out probably for a fountain. Um, so I think a pretty decent haul on this jar. Maybe it was a big cookie jar. I don't know. It's got some snowflakes that are scraped up. I'll probably take those all the way off. Um, Lots to do, lots of ideas, so who knows what we're going to get out of all this. Well, hey folks, welcome back. We've got another project we're going to get started on. Let's see if you can guess how we're going to put this one together. I've got the pieces of this. Um, you'll recognize maybe uh, this candle holder, which is strangely the twin to one that I already used. Um, I found them in two separate uh, Goodwill stores, so somehow they got separated, and uh, I found the mate. Uh, this is a piece of glass I picked up uh, yesterday, along with this red vase. I've got a couple of these saucers, as you know, uh, glass beads, and a uh, glass marble that I painted with my alcohol inks previously. I think that'll work. So some of this may look familiar to you from the other uh, indoor totem that I did, and we're gonna kind of do the same thing with this, except we've got some different pieces. So let's have a look at this. Um, what we're gonna be doing with, I'll put that there, with this, let me try and get it in the center, is I got these about as clean as I can. We're going to put that there, the saucer on top, this candle holder above that, and those pieces on top of the candle holder. So, let's get started. Let me just share that I already know that this piece is a tinted or painted surface inside this vase um, and I because I can see some of the scratches that uh, threw it in the bottom so I know that's not a through and through colored piece of glass but that's okay as I said this one is going to be an indoor piece so it's we're not gonna have to worry as much about weathering and I think I can leave this one open at the bottom it's gonna be on a tabletop or something inside um, possibly on the floor. I don't need to seal that off with another plate, but you know, you could always you could always consider doing that with a small plate or saucer if you felt like you wanted to have a more stable base. All right, let's see. That, this, this is actually a fairly heavy piece. But again, they're not all exactly perfect. It's interesting that this was cut in the glass making process and ground down to have a smoother edge. And I can see that in the grinding process, 
they slipped and so it's got a little blemish there. Could be why it ended up at the um, thrift shop. Now, if you look at my list of materials, you'll notice that I always list the 100% silicone. People ask me, what do you use for glue? Do you use epoxy? Do you use something stronger? And it's funny, I've noticed others do the same thing. Silicon, to me, if it's meant for outdoor use, with it, and if you look at windows and doors, that usually gives you that indication. To me, it's durable, flexible, and it just provides a good surface. Okay, once again, you have to kind of figure out where your point of contact is going to be. step. What is that going to be? Well, that's going to be getting this piece on. So far, so good. Next step. For the last step, I'm kind of high up here, so it may be tough for you to see it. So I'll assemble it and um, show you what it looks like. It's a matter of taking these glass beads. I'm going to put four of them on the top. 